So yeah, my name's Elliot Robbins. Um, I'm based in Tucson. I graduated from the University of Arizona uh, a couple of years ago in 2017. And uh, yeah, this is my work. Um, I guess I'll start by kind of discussing, and as uh, Christian was saying, if you have anything to kind of ask, you can kind of just blurt it out. It kind of helps me kind of keep a flow. Uh, they, speak a little louder? Uh, yeah. Um, so these videos are done using a technique called rotoscoping. Um, and uh, rotoscoping is basically taking a kind of video and then drawing on top of it to kind of create an animation from that. So uh, that was the technique that they originally used to make uh, Snow White. Um, and yeah. Oh, OK. Wow. I didn't realize that was so loud, so commanding. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I used a technique called rotoscoping and Photoshop. Um, and uh, rotoscoping I had known about just because uh, I'm a fan of animation and I studied kind of the history of it. And uh, Disney used it, like I said, to create uh, Snow White. Um, they actually brought in a live model and, and had her kind of act out all of the scenes. And they filmed her and then drew on top of it. Um, yeah, uh, so one thing I kind of wanted to say is that I don't necessarily want to explain what this work means in a sense. I'll talk about why I did it and the context of its creation and things like that, but I don't want to tell you how to feel about it. Um, part of, I, for me, what it is to make an artwork is to um, leave room for interpretation. Um, I'm actually really against kind of any kind of artist that tells you what an artwork is about and expects you to kind of just believe what they say. I mean, you can draw any kind of interpretation from this that you want. Um, yeah, so I, I guess I'll start by talking about uh, where these works come from and, the, and uh, where I was when I did them. Um, so the first one that I did was the Snow White video that you see there. Um, and I did that as a part of my graduate thesis. Um, and uh, at the time that I did it, I was interested in a lot of stuff, and this was, what, 2017? There was a lot that happened in the news surrounding topics surrounding representation, especially representation of black bodies. Um, you know, as a student, you kind of start to soak in a lot of information. I was looking at the news uh, at large, but also art news. There were a couple of events that uh, I wanted to talk about briefly that kind of really informed uh, what I was thinking about or kind of heightened my awareness of representation as a topic for uh, an important topic for contemporary art. Uh, there was the, it was the 2016, maybe some of the people that work in uh, museums would remember, but in 2016 there was a show at the CAM in St. Louis, a, a contemporary art museum in St. Louis, uh, by an artist named um, uh, Kelly Walker. And this, it was an exhibition of his work that got, it was protested and eventually they, I think they fired the, the head museum person there and, uh, and I, I don't know if they took down the work, but it was definitely a very uh, controversial show. Uh, another event that happened was the 2017 Whitney Biennial that had a painting by Dana Schutz. Uh, the painting was of Emmett Till, the young black teen, or yeah, I guess he was a teenager who had been murdered for making a pass at a white woman. Um, and I thought these were really interesting events to kind of, that happened, and they happened while I was in school thinking about some of these topics, but uh, the, the kind of the crux of those events was uh, the idea of representation and uh, who has access to representation, who can use uh, someone's representation, um, and it, that idea being subject to someone's race, uh, gender, uh, sexual orientation, I'm assuming, as well, and who has been exploited and, and who hasn't. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, I started thinking about the representation, and I had been thinking about it, and, but it play, started to play a, a much larger role in my work. Um, yeah, so I got... I, I, at the time, I was exploring uh, collage as a kind of a tactic for bringing together disparate you know, pictures that can kind of speak to or create some type of tension. Um, so I was just really interested in the idea that you can take 
you know, one picture, we'll put it on a piece of paper and then take another picture and then you can kind of create a, a friction. So I was taking a lot of really loaded pictures, like a lot of culturally loaded, kind of like just uh, uh, ridiculous looking pictures and then kind of trying to make new narratives out of those uh, images. And that's a uh, collage as a kind of idea is where these works come from. Um, so, and they, that was work I was doing when I was in graduate school, uh, thinking about collage and thinking about representation. Uh, so Snow White clapping, this comes from a, I pulled the, the loop of Snow White from a YouTube video, which is why the resolution is so low. Um, and I, I drew on top of her with this character. So this character is kind of apparent in a lot of the work I do. Uh, he's just, he kind of originally came from a lot of the research I was doing as an undergraduate went into uh, American stereotypes, uh, American illustration, um, into kind of how, how representation had been transitioning through the 19th century. And uh, at the birth of the American mass culture, which was print, through printmaking and lithography, I was studying lithography at the time. Um, I got into looking at representations of black people, black people through Courier and Ives in particular. And I started drawing this character. And then eventually over time, it just any time I had to, you know, kind of make a, a picture or just kind of uh, document something for myself, it became a shorthand for who I am. And, and so all of the research I did kind of stopped. It stopped being about, drawing him stopped being about the research and more so about my own interest in kind of exploring subjective uh, topics as opposed to just doing work about that was research-based. Um, Yeah, so when I say collage, I more so mean in like almost a broader kind of like uh, two, two disparate things that are coming together in a way. So like in collage, I wasn't necessarily making pictures. I was just kind of taking like the loaded content that would be in one picture and putting it next to another picture. And, and so, yeah, you know, it, you can have a picture that looks like, uh, I don't know, of a, of a riot or something. You put it next to a picture of a flower and you can kind of inform how that picture is going to be read. Um, so yeah, it, 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 it's a collage in the sense that, yeah, you have two different things that kind of come together. At least that's my thinking. I started, I mean, I started with actually doing collages, then got into the, just the, how collage kind of plays into culture today, remix culture. A lot of, uh, you know, most of what we have today is a remix of something else added on to something else. So it's all kind of just uh, a mess of, of other things. Um, uh, but yeah, 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 collage is really important to me. Or just kind of the idea that I wasn't gonna kind of birth out these, these grand concepts, you know, they had to come from somewhere and I had to bring them together. Um, but uh, yeah, um, so this work was a part of my uh, thesis exhibition and uh, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> it was originally shown with a series of drawings which I think were uh, probably the best representation of it but uh, just because it kind of helped inform uh, how it could be interpreted, but uh, um, yeah, so Snow White here is, uh, I don't know, I, I, I was very interested in the idea of this kind of body as occupying a space of um, to be looked, quote unquote, to be looked at in this or a kind of this uh, feminine ideal that kind of exists in, in cinema and uh, wanting to occupy that position. So kind of being interested in, in projecting myself into the agency that this representation has or being, uh, wanting to, I don't know, it, it's, it, I was really interested in studying sim cinema and especially representation in cinema and like uh, especially representations of uh, women in cinema and how this is sort of a, a, 
a protected position. So if, if you're familiar with drag culture or like drag race or anything like that, it's kind of a similar thing where there's this uh, American ideal of kind of uh, white femininity that a lot of uh, these queens kind of aspire to, but they can't really access, so they start to change their, uh, their outer, um, you know, wardrobe and face and things to kind of match this ideal. Um, but it's just a fit. They're, they're not representing actual women. They're kind of mirroring the ideal. So it's, it's more so interested in that. But instead of doing that, I, I, I was more interested in kind of appropriating the agency that that body has or that, the power that that body has. Um, I was doing a lot of reading about the male gaze and, and about the power, you know, the critiques of that. On the other hand, you know, as a queer male, the there isn't much written about the, well, there is by a few artists about the kind of desire to have that gaze or to at least occupy the position of being the desired object in that narrative. Um, and and uh, one thing to note too is that there's, these two figures aren't, uh, they're not representing anything real. They're kind of abstractions in and of their own right. So I'm not necessarily making work about what it means to be a white woman or what it means to be a black man. It's sort of like a projection into this like cinematic fantasy space. Um, uh, this work uh, came a little bit later, but uh, what it's paired with are, is audio from the, um, it's the time right before the election. So I guess it would be the primaries, right before the 2016 elections. And uh, what I had was I had a, a recorder that, was, uh, that I would just kind of record the TV with and then kind of just let it play, then pause it, let it play. And so it's, just, it's meant to just be this kind of a news cacophony of, of, of sound that uh, I recorded off of the news. So it's, it kind of just, you get that it's the news, but you don't really get exactly what's being said. So it's just this kind of constant uh, uh, barrage of sounds from, from the media about this particular time period uh, in 2016. And uh, yeah, yeah, I like this, fi I wanted to use this figure in this way because she, she's sleeping, but she's halfway between kind of having died and being awake. Uh, also kind of referencing, I kind of briefly talked about it, but the, uh, the Emmett Till painting of the, the, the black man who had been, who had been murdered. Um, but, uh, yeah, are there any questions or thoughts? Well, yeah, Snow White was interesting to me because she kind of sort of represented this kind of pristine purity. And, uh, and uh, I mean, I had done, maybe it might help to know, I'd done other works where I had taken pictures of women in cinema and in, in movies and I had drawn my face on top to kind of project myself into this, to the space that they have and have that agency. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess, for me, I'm not necessarily trying to critique that objectivity um, because it, I don't know. It's it's interesting to me that it's an objectivity that's had by a particular kind of body. So, and it's a particular kind of body that others have altered themselves greatly to try to to ascertain. Um, so yeah, it's almost like wish fulfillment or kind of uh, a meditation on the separation of this body and that body in this kind of uh, uh, imaginary space. Yeah, I mean, I definitely taught myself uh, 
to do it. Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't want it to look good because I didn't want to make something that looked kind of polished and something that looked like I'm showing off my technique using this rotoscoping thing. Uh, and that was a part of it. I just didn't, I didn't want it to kind of, the thing about animation is that it's sort of built on the novelty of knowing that every frame is drawn by somebody. And I wanted to kind of make it sh so short that you couldn't, you couldn't necessarily be so impressed by the skill of having drawn something over and over again, but it's it kind of it just a meditation on the, the idea of kind of copying someone else's hand. That's why it's called master study. But um, yeah, no, I, I taught myself the technique and I, I've done other kinds as far as like uh, drawing on paper and things. I've never done the cell animation, but It was it was with a, a, a Wacom uh, pad, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, they they actually took a couple of days just because I had a hard time paying attention to it. But yeah, no, I mean, as far as the, um, it's very weird because the animation itself. Uh, is only about probably, this one's way short, this one's probably maybe 10 frames, but then the drawing itself might be 40, between like 40 and 60 frames of my drawing. So there's a difference between, uh, and that was part of the reason why I called it master study is because it was taking, it would take me five times as long to do something that would come, you know, e a lot easier to somebody else and it was kind of like uh, finding an analogy to kind of copying a, a master's painting. but. Uh, yeah, yeah, this one, this one, I don't, yeah, I want to say there's about 40 frames there, and, and this one, I really can't remember, but uh, all that's really happening is that she's blinking and things, but for the most part in the old animation, if she's sitting still, they're not drawing anything, they're not drawing the same frame over and over again, so I just kind of kept going and, and went frame by frame. Um, no, I haven't done that, no. No, I've, do, I've done these pieces and I've done a few kind of animation pieces where, you know, they're just sort of, uh, they're also loops, but they're more like traditional animation. So he's not really interacting with anything. Um, but no, I haven't done that. Oh, yeah. Um, well, kind of going back to what I was saying a little bit earlier, I wanted to, that this, this body, this kind of unique representation of Snow White representing pristine kind of purity, um, I wanted to kind of, and she, in, in the narrative of Snow White, the film, the, the character has, she has agency. Uh, she has, uh, um, I don't know, control over that narrative. It's the best way I can describe that. But, um, and I wanted to kind of appropriate the kind of subjectivity of that body. And so, is she, yeah, he's on top uh, because I wanted to kind of put these two bodies in a space where the conversation surrounding the black male body and the white female body would just be a little bit different and uh, where he's the subject in a way. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I do mostly kind of ink drawings and watercolors. Um, this, these were kind of, I really wanted to do a video art, uh, and I, I still kind of struggle with it. I'm traditionally trained in painting and, and, uh, and drawing, things like that. Kelly, would you tell us about your background? Are you from Arizona? Did you... Oh, uh, no, I'm from Oklahoma. So uh, yeah, I got my uh, bachelor's in art at the University of Oklahoma. 
then I came here for graduate school. And uh, yeah, currently I, I live in Tucson and uh, I sh show at a gallery that's based in New York and uh, was lucky enough to have that happen. And uh, yeah. Uh, uh, well, a lot of a lot of paintings. Uh, yeah, video works. I've shown this video, the actually both of these videos, a few other things, and yeah, yeah. Basically, everything that I have that I could kind of ship there, I I put there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, um, I knew I wanted to use Snow White, and I you know I wanted it to be sort of a consistent loop that was seamless. Uh, and this scene, for a number of reasons, just really worked. It wasn't necessarily for the clapping. It ended up working really well with other pieces I did, get kind of the clapping and kind of how you would interpret that as a, uh, it, it worked out well. But no, originally I was just looking for a clip of Snow White kind of that I could use because I don't know, there are certain things like here, and you, it's not on this video because it would have been too difficult to draw, but like the, these, the edges of the video are painted in, and I wanted her isolated and kind of not too active, and so she kind of starts in motion and then returns to another similar pose, so it, looping it's pretty easy. So, yeah, I just wanted, I was looking for a place where I tried doing it where she was just running <laughs> through the forest and running and just kind of kept running, but uh, that, those are a lot harder because I would have had to, as, had to end up trying to paint out all of the, the you know, the creatures in the forest and the, all that stuff, and it's, it got complicated. I'm not nearly big enough for them to, to contact. You know, like a, you know, there's plenty of artists that use um, their their work, uh, and because this is kind of directly uh, referencing their work, it's it's almost it, it very much so falls under um, what do they call it fair use. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't really. I mean, if I had to take it to court, I probably couldn't afford to do that anyway. But yeah, it de definitely falls into that. But they are definitely one of the, I mean, they changed the copyright law because of, <laughs> and not for this, but for, not for contemporary art, but for things. Uh, but yeah, Disney's, I, I did think about that, but I'm just not anywhere on their, their radar. And it doesn't, I, don't, I, I seriously doubt that my work has any, it's not necessarily about Snow White. I'm not necessarily critiquing Disney um, themselves, but uh, um I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know if they would ever care that I used Snow White. Um, kind of talking about the idea of the stereotypical representation of black men, like the dark skin, the big lips. Um, you know, there's, you know, throughout my life, I've noticed that there's a lot of things that have been created to oppress black people, and there's been certain situations where black people turn it over and kind of like reclaim it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of how I, like a small way that I interpret this piece. Do you have any thoughts on reclaiming the stereotype? Yeah, I mean, that was sort of what I initially started out drawing him as. It was kind of like looking at all of these representations of black people uh, in stereotyped kind of uh, images. They're, they're, you know, they're all kind of doing the same thing. They're all looking like they're doing crazy things. Um, the images themselves are a little bit innocuous, aside from the fact that they're just sort of this pervasive uh, representation that kind of alludes to buffoonery. But uh, but they they all lack a kind of subjectivity. Like there's no there's no individual figure. They're all just kind of the same, doing the same thing. So yeah, I, I definitely wanted to initially thinking I wanted to recover something and and kind of I guess in a, I don't know I guess I gave up on that a little bit in a sense. But um, that's sort of all I'm interested in is doing work that speaks from a subjective experience versus a uh, a broad kind of social 
or like I'm not doing work that that tells you that this is about some type of history that happened or anything. This is about, if anything, it alludes to my own personal experiences and kind of thinking about that. And and it's I think of my it as being more of a meditation. But I mean, yeah, that's definitely something I've thought about and worked with. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I want to kind of move away from uh, <laughs> everything I've been doing, I guess. I, I'd love to kind of branch out and do narrative animations. It just takes so long to do those. So, you know, I'll sit and write for a while and not be happy with anything. Then I have to draw everything because I'm working with animation. And it can kind of be like, it'll take probably a year before I have something that I feel good about. Um, I've worked with small loops of animation. Um, yeah, I'd like, to, I'd like to try out many different things like photography, sculpture, uh, just to kind of branch out and do different things. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I'm based in Tucson. I don't plan to. Yeah, yeah. I, I just don't plan to because they, uh, there's no real, uh, uh, there's no real job prospects for an artist out there. Um, it's, a, it's a nice place to live. Definitely, but uh, I don't know. I kind of really, really miss the weather, greenery, things like that. Um, yeah, yeah, I really want to move to a place where it just kind of rains very consistently throughout the year. <laughs> no, the art scene here put me, uh, yeah, Christian who's back there works at a, a gal, worked at a gal. Well, it's still, everybody's still around, but it was a gallery that was based in Tucson and they got me or they had a fair, applied for a space at a fair in New York, and that kind of branched out to me getting other things. The, the scene in Tucson's really good, and I think small art scenes are really important just because it's easy to meet people, it's easy to show. Um, not just that it's easy, but people actually care, and they like the art, and they're, they want to they wanna talk about the art, and it's not just about the money. Um, no, I think local art scenes are really important. Um, Like uh, like bigger art fair, like uh, like uh, I mean, like like exhibitions. Yeah, no, I mean I've shown I've shown these videos at other places. Like the, I showed this one. Actually, I think both of these at the Independent. Uh, that was the fair I was referring to was Nada in New York. I think I've also shown at Nada in Miami, uh, <laughs> with with the gallery in New York. Uh, yeah, like uh, I've shown a few at a few fairs. I really don't like them, but I you know. <laughs> they're kind of, they work as far as what they're intended to do, which is to sell art. They do work. <laughs> they do work. Um, and uh, galleries, I was at Freeze, and I ran into a, gallery, a gallerist I had met in New York, and she was saying something like they sold everything. In, uh, like, it was like the first day of the fair in Freeze in L.A. And it, like, they, I don't know, the, the fairs are gross in that you're in this space where you see all of this art that's just to be sold, and it's, all packed into one place and it kind of diminishes its power. But, um, you know, it's necessary. Yeah. <laughs>